grüße euch Miri und Christian. Hallo. Hallo. Ähm, für alle Zuschauer wir werden diese Folge, diese Episode auf Englisch machen, weil ähm, Christian sich besser fühlt mit der englischen Sprache und außerdem finde ich es super toll, dass wir immer wieder mal eine englische Folge dabei haben und deswegen noch einmal Hi Miriam, Christian, welcome to the show. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, please take uh, a few minutes and tell the audience um, who you are and what you do. Uh, you're Miri and I'm Christian. <laughs> um, and um, we, uh, we owned and operate Kaliena over in Neubaugasse in the 7th district. Um, it's a... I think on, on, on first pass, it, it appears to be a plant shop, which it is. Um, we're, we're very excited about uh, expanding and pushing the boundaries of, of what that seems to be. Mm -hmm. um, and that's sort of what gets us excited and why we started it. It's very much about, uh, even before we started uh, Kaliena, before we even came up with the ideas, I think we said we wanted to create a vehicle for growth, mm -hmm. which would allow us to essentially, um, I guess, travel through this life in some vehicle and... Um Leute, sorry, kurze Unterbrechung. Eine wichtige Bitte habe ich an euch. Ich mache nun schon seit einiger Zeit diese Podcast. Es geht gleich weiter. Wenn es für euch kein Problem ist und wenn euch dieser Podcast gefällt, Gebt mir ein Like da unten, das hilft mir mit der Reichweite. Und wenn ihr meinen Kanal abonniert, dann ist das überhaupt super toll. Jetzt geht's weiter mit der Episode. Viel Spaß. What a beautiful definition. <lacht> yeah, and it, I mean, and, and essentially like allows us to evolve and experiment in certain ways and grow. And so the plants do serve as a metaphor in a mm -hmm. way for that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yes, right now, uh, what we look like uh, makes a lot of sense that that's the perception and we hope to uh, grow beyond that and push um, just for the own, just the fun of life and trying new things and playing and enjoying this whole process that we all get to experience here. So great. And the, I think the bigger vision is to be well, and that's, I think what we are, but it's to be a nature based concept store. Mm -hmm. So nature will always play a big role, but there's other aspects to it as well. Mm -hmm. um, there's the cafe aspect, which obviously um, got us connected to you in yes, some way. Did, yeah. um, we also sell books. We sell objects. I would, let me interrupt and, you for a second. Yeah. I just want to say that I would have definitely invited you also if you would not have the cafe part. Okay. Wow. <laughs> because I just think that this is what uh, Christian was just said. It's, it's an interesting approach of uh, becoming uh, your own boss and opening your mm -hmm. own business to get the freedom of living your life. This is the way I understood it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's much more what also my business is about than talking about cafes and coffee. Yeah. Of course, yeah, that makes sense. So, sorry for the interruption. No, no, all good. Um, yeah, and I think that our our kind of mantra, or mission, whatever you want to call it, is uh, grow every day. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of about, in the one hand, it's about the more um, practical aspects of growth, which in our um, place come through the form of, of plants. So bringing plants into your life, um, you know, adding to a living space, um, kind of benefiting from all the amazing things that plants can provide you with um, mm -hmm. in your space. It's, you know, concentration, inspiration. It just helps. There's little... It slows you down. It slows you down, exactly. There's health benefits, um, mm -hmm. with cleaner air, all those things. But um, a lot of it is also the, the connection to nature and you kind of um, spending time thinking about nature, how something might grow. That all is, you know, is very beneficial to us as humans because mm -hmm. we're, we're quite disconnected from it, especially in the city. Mm -hmm. um, we especially come from, or we used to live in cities where they were, you know, true concrete jungles, where there was mm -hmm. very little nature. I think in Vienna, we're actually quite spoiled with yeah. um, nature all around us, but still mm -hmm. bringing it in is quite beneficial. I think Viennese people are not, they, they, they are not very aware of it, that they are living in a very green city. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Viennese people always complaining about everything. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> if you move to a real concrete jungle, then you mm -hmm. feel it and then, then you... Uh, when you remember your hometown Vienna, then you feel like, okay, that's a really green city. 
A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, it's true. We, um, well, and then let me just finish that okay. part. I think the other the other part is the the kind of personal growth. Um, so grow every day in that in that way, and that's something that we're still building. But that's where we um, have a lot of books, for example, mm -hmm. that help with kind of personal growth and and development. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of where we combined a lot of our passions into this one crazy package mm -hmm. that now turned into Korean. so i, I just re i'm just realizing right now that you can um all of the aspects you can build on the word growth right so that's mm -hmm. a very good combination I, mm -hmm. I i'm just realizing it right now yeah you can like personal growth is a very very uh, uh important aspect of life right uh mm -hmm. plants grow mm -hmm. of course and as you said and described plants are when when you know how to or if you feel free enough to implement them in your areas in your life like for example this space here without the plants if we would take away mm -hmm. these few plants it would look totally different and mm -hmm. it would not give uh such a so so an angenehm gefühl wenn du das kurz übersetzen möchtest yeah like a calming mm -hmm. yeah. comforting environment I yes guess. and i think also the cafe aspect has a, a, a growth base because cafes are where you come together with people right and you mm -hmm. grow relationships Socialize, and you 100 yeah. yes yeah there's yeah. a big aspect of why we included that in the concept well, okay. vienna yeah. has that as a deep history in terms of a social space where like intellectual discussion artistic creation or any kind of social connection takes place in these kinds of environments. And yes. so that was really important for us to integrate into what we're doing um, because, I mean, yes, of course, we love coffee and we love tea and matcha and all these things. Um, but like you said, without the plants in this space, it would be very different. Without the cafe, it would be very different for yes. us as well. It wouldn't have mm -hmm. the same energy and the dynamic, mm -hmm. even in the people that we bring in who are, super passionate about coffee you know it's like mm -hmm. you start bringing in different mindsets and different per perspectives and then you realize that as you start mixing those things together you know where we come from in terms of like um like creative agency world in terms of all different disciplines that think mm -hmm. you know or have a common goal but all kind of go at it at a different angle it's just really nice to have that mixture and it then brings in different kinds of customers as well mm -hmm. so that's a different kind of energy and yeah and i think we we don't really have like uh, you know like a blueprint as to like oh this is exactly how it should be and we're going to get this result it's more so it's a big experiment mm -hmm. and with that mm -hmm. that's where i think we're less about trying to create some formulaic solution and more about creating um some kind of environment that allows for these kinds of things to take place and mix mm -hmm. so that you get different outcomes and from those outcomes you learn and you grow and to grow yeah and that that again it's like even this concept of growth is really constantly evolving because we don't i mean we're not we've had, we're we're still pretty young and new at this we mm -hmm. don't really know what we're doing half the time, you know, we're just trying to figure it out like everybody else. And I think that's the the big thing. That's a big myth, right? That like mm -hmm. people have it figured out, you know, it's this thing from a childhood that you grow up and you're like, oh, well, my parents have it figured out. And then you become older like your parents and realize, oh, wait, no, they didn't have it figured <laughs> out, Yeah, you know, and that that's and I think there's this mythology where everybody's trying to pretend like they have it figured out because they think everybody else has it figured out. But in reality, everybody's just trying to figure it out. And I think the more we can be more honest and open about that, the more we can grow in a certain way that is less, there's less uh, constrictions. You know, social media creates this by our like ideas of what is perfection and all of these kinds of, you know, really sort of social ideas and we get they're almost like handcuffs and we get imprisoned by these things and i think we wanted to create an environment that is really about exploration and openness and and vulnerability and the ability to grow and yes connect with nature but also connect with yourself because mm. as we were saying the personal growth aspect is super important. Are, are you having this kind of conversations with your customers in your oh, shop yeah without a doubt yeah mm -hmm. yes super important i mean yeah. if you look at the book selections we create we try to create books or bring books in there that are going to uh inspire these kinds of conversations mm -hmm. it's the more and more 
the kind of environment we want to create where this kind of dialogue is commonplace and it's every day and that people actually come to have that kind of connection. So I've just, uh, I know this is not part of, uh, of what I planned in this show, <laughs> but I'm just asking myself while I'm listening to you, you should have this kind of show in your shop <laughs> mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. Why don't you have it? Or how, how can well, I make you have it? Yeah. Well, we have, I, I, we have the concept already like in the, in the PDF form, but it's down the line because we have enough on our plate at yeah. the moment. And she's always, um, uh, you explain it. I don't know. It's, you definitely have all the ingredients and you just, you just told the whole story you need for, uh, for a format like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that we would love to do. And I think we'd love, I mean, this kind of exchange, yes. this kind of connection, this kind of dialogue, you know, if you imagine if, if the world could just have these kinds of dialogues versus this all the time, yeah. think about how much better the world would be. And it doesn't have to be big drastic moves. It just has to be conversation. Yeah, yeah. And conversation. I, I think the bigger the scale, the more complicated communication gets. And we 100. see that right now, unfortunately, mm -hmm. also in Europe, yeah. mm -hmm. in Eastern Europe. Um, but, but that's a very big topic. I do it, not know if we can cover yeah. this right here. But I think the point yeah. being is, it, I think that's actually the point is that what like I'm often saying is that like I can't move a mountain like that. What you're talking about, all we can do is chip away. And it means that we all in our daily lives, little by little, that's how the mountain crumbles. Mm. It does not. It's not one big swift moment. It's little efforts. And these kinds of openness and this kind of dialogue is, is key to that. Because without that, what, how can you actually make a difference? Do you know what I mean? So I do think yeah. these kinds of you know, uh, podcasts and conversations and think about what the Internet has provided, where a, a kid in the middle of nowhere can listen to a conversation about any range of topics and yeah. not feel alone and feel connected mm. that didn't happen when i was growing up yeah i mean, I mean yeah. a lot of people in young older generations don't know what that experience is like but yet in younger generations yeah. growing up with that and that's brilliant i think we just uh, uh witnessed an acceleration of the um, awareness of exactly this mm -hmm. what you just described uh, through Corona and that a lot of mm -hmm. people started to consuming this kind of communication, this kind of content mm -hmm. through the internet. And uh, hopefully this will lead in a good direction. But I would like to <laughs> follow up some things that you um, said before when you were talking about um, your your shop, your business and um, wh what you're doing and what the purpose and the reason is of everything. And I wanted to add something. You said that you have an environment, you wanted to create an environment where it is all about growth and all the things that you said. And um, you also mentioned people um, having problems with not having it figured out to at a certain moment in life, which is in usually very young years, which is not necessary to have it. And um, I think one of the main pressures which makes people think like that and uh, live like that is financial pressure. It's also mental pressure because mm -hmm. you have to have a, a mental freedom to have this way of thinking and you mm -hmm. have to have personal mm -hmm. growth and like, to consume a lot of um, personal development content to get to a state like that. But also you have to have the financial freedom to put that pressure off of you. Yeah, mm. and you can. Uh, I'm seeing it like this: like when when I have money problems, mm -hmm. I have the I have the feeling that I have not figured it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if mm -hmm. I do not have money, so there are a lot of people which do not have money problems, mm -hmm. and they beat themselves up not having it figured out because they want a lot of more money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so if we take the money thing away from it, uh, only then you can get the freedom to say, okay, I want to experiment, I want to try things, I want to get to know myself and I want to figure out mm -hmm. what, what, is, what is it that I want to do, what is it that I want to mm -hmm. build. And um, I, I think there should, be, there should be a solution for that. Mm -hmm. There should be a solution for that. I think conversations and content in that mm -hmm. direction is one uh, mm -hmm. part of the equation. But definitely um, politicians and economy has to do their part. For yeah, that. without a doubt. I mean, I feel like also there is a, it, it's maybe a complicated topic, but I think there is also 
there is a, a line between I actually have real money problems and I'm in, I'm in debt or I don't know how to, you know, buy food for my kids tomorrow, like these serious problems, which mm -hmm. obviously take over. But I think then there is also this switch where a lot of people um, make money for money's sake to be mm -hmm. more fulfilled. Yes. And and that's i think where where personal development and those things can come in where suddenly you realize that that might actually not be the fulfillment and yes. obviously again this is very yes. different but, from but you have to you, you have to real you, money you have problems. to have had it in your life to understand it like people mm. think they have money mm. problems because they do not have the money to buy the mercedes mm. yeah. so that's not a money problem but but mm. these people don't know that mm -hmm. yeah and that's i think where a lot of those books actually help because you then realize like oh i don't have to identify myself Self, um, through the Mercedes that's not actually who I am yeah. and you think more about who you actually are and if you know I think if if the books we sell can help even like two people you know in the whole time we're open to kind of get over that and then mm. find real fulfillment through who they are and what they do and be happy with that it's like a we're like that's something Yeah. That is very exciting to you us. You should make you should make a podcast like a book club. <laughs> you, should, you really should. Yeah. I think it's a very interesting topic. Yeah. I think you are the right people for it. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank I think you. I think we'll we'll yeah we'll yeah. we'll let that simmer. Yeah, yeah. simmer. I I think I, I expect. Sorry, I want to add something. I, I expect to be one of the guests whenever yeah, you start. Obviously, you'll be the first one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be great. Maybe not the first one. So let let somebody else yeah, be the yeah, first I'd one. Yeah, be the guinea pig. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but I, but I do think I think with a lot of like what Mary's saying in those books is that those so many if you look at these books like they're they're sage wisdom they're not from today mm -hmm. they're from centuries yes. you know mm -hmm. and and I think that um, you know the Tao Te Ching it's like all, all of these like texts are you know a, like timeless are timeless mm -hmm. and they're yeah. and I think even if you look at religious texts, you know, there's so many overlaps in terms of what they're saying, and they're all sort of this philo philosophy saying, it's not out here, it's in here. Mm. And so this idea, it's it's almost a con to believe that it's out here. And I yeah. think that's that's the that's the thing that, um, you know, everybody has to go on their own personal oh, journey. 100%. And I think this, and I, this is the, one of the most interesting parts in everybody's life is to understand that uh, what, what what's an outside problem, what's an inside problem. Yeah. And a lot of inside problems are considered outside problems. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and the, uh, the, the solutions are looked for in the outside, mm -hmm. but in the truth, they're in the inside. Mm -hmm. It's always on the inside yeah. because your your mindset, your mindset, it's like reality is completely subjective. You know how things are happening. Uh, some I was reading this morning this uh, Eckhart Tolle uh, quote, and he said it so succinctly. Where he said, "The sun doesn't rise and set. If you go into outer space, the sun never rises and sets. It's yeah. only because your vantage point that you're seeing the sun rise and set. Mm. So, does that mean the sun doesn't rise or set? That's a that's a subjective conversation. Yeah. In any situation, this conversation, how your perceiving us how we're perceiving you how they're perceiving us yeah. they're all vantage points and they're you're interpreting it interpreting it through your own context and your own experience yes. so with that it means that everything is in here and you're processing it through yeah. this thing and that means that like you can change that you know you can sculpt that you can you can Let me interrupt you, Christian. Yeah. Being aware of this, I think it's a very big present that Sorry. you can give. That you can give. I think it's a very big present that you can give to anybody in, in the world to have this kind of awareness mm -hmm. and to have the freedom to spend time thinking about things like this and working on on oneself. Mm -hmm. And that's a great thing. And I see uh, two people sitting in front of me, which uh, made themselves the, the situation where they can do it. So I would like to ask you, because I think that's a lot of value for the people watching this. Um, how do you, you already said it a little bit, you come from a, a creative agency world. How, what, what do you have to have lived? How do you establish a situation in your life where you have the, uh, let's first talk maybe about the financial side, where you have uh, the possibility to open your own business where you feel free inside, where you can deal with whatever uh, you like mm -hmm. um, and, and, and not trap into the usual problems that you have if you 
want to make a quick buck. Mm -hmm. So for sure, let me explain a little bit what I mean, where I want to go is, how, uh, first of all, how do you develop the um, the Selbstsicherheit? Uh, self-confidence. How, how do you thing. develop the self-confidence <laughs> to uh, be your own business owner mm. in the first place? And how do you get the financial security to do that? Mm. And what is your plan, plan, plan B or C or D or how, how many mm -hmm. plans you have? Uh, Tell us a little bit about that. Do we have three hours, two, <laughs> ten hours? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we, we do not have yeah, that yeah, much time, yeah. but we definitely have the possibility to make episode two and episode yeah, three. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I feel like the, the start of it all is that for us, it was that the, the, the jobs we worked in were really helpful for us for a long time and taught us a lot of things. But in the end, they were not satisfying and they were not fulfilling and they actually made us really unhappy in different ways. It's hard to say that because we had amazing times and yeah. we worked with really incredible people and for incredible people, I think. So we're really grateful for that. I think I can speak for both of us in mm -hmm. that. Um, but at the same time, the work itself at some point, like, and I think that was really hard for us to, um, to, to kind of, realize and be honest about that to ourselves and to each other back then because we were you know in these kind of career typical career jobs mm. where you you can climb a ladder and you can see what the next step is but then we were both looking up that ladder and we're like that's not the ladder we want to be on um let, let me give you some more specific questions oh. um when uh, did you did you go to university did you study did you mm -hmm. have you been in college mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so at what age have you been there regular age 18 19 20 21 22 yeah you a bit later me yeah at 19. i started at 20 i went to community college between high school i didn't know what i wanted to do okay uh and yeah and the friends it's that's a long story i ended up going to college at or 23 or something Okay, so to, let's yeah. say in the in the early in your early twenties, you have been um, still at, in school mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. Did you know back then that you are going to have your own business one day in your life? Mm -hmm. Was it clear for you? Or it wasn't not? for me at all. I think it was for you. Yeah, I mean, I I I grew up uh, skateboarding, snowboarding, and brands and design were. I didn't know what it was back then, but I just loved it. And my dad would pull out drawings at seven years old where I drew logos of something. And mm -hmm. and it's like I knew from the day then I, my friends and I started this like a really bad, lame skateboarding brand in high school. But it was just this idea that we had something to rally around. But like I just grew up. So, idolizing like Burton snowboards like Jake. Burton. So you have been a, a little entrepreneur. Uh... Um, soul already in your young years? Uh, I no, I don't think so. I think I was always afraid of going out on my own and us. I mean, I, I went through my career working in design agencies and studios and I, my mentality was like, okay, I need to work for this next person and learn this part. And now I need to go work for this person and learn this part. And I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And I, but then I would go work for brilliant people. And then I would just it was kind of like the Matrix, right? You like snap in and, you're like, oh, and you get all the experience. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, this is awesome. And it's also like super challenging. Like I worked for extremely demanding. So people. what you just said is the reason for you to accept a job was always the learning part, never the money part. One hundred percent. I yeah. in my career, even at the end, in the job that I was in, I could have gone and worked easily for somebody and made three times as much for one of the big, big like corporate agencies. Yeah. But I stayed and worked or for brands. or brands. Yeah. 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 Like I had a lot of friends that went and worked for big brands because like, at, you know, going to work for Apple was always on the table. Hmm. But like working at the agency I worked at was an independent agency that prided itself on that. Let, let me stay at that point. I think yeah. that's a really, really valuable point. The, the thing uh, going to work for learnings instead mm -hmm. of going to work for uh, the money in mm -hmm. young years mm -hmm. i think that's very very uh, healthy mindset mm -hmm. and i think that 99 percent of the youth nowadays does not have that kind of mindset when they look yeah. for a job they look for the quick money because they think that the quick money is what will get them wherever they want mm -hmm. to go and they do not see the the long-term thing where they will have their relationship or their own business 
with the relationship together in 15 years, in 20 years, in 10 mm -hmm. years, which is really going to give them the freedom to sit in my show one day and say, mm -hmm. hey, we are doing everything about growth because this is what we are and this is our passion and this mm -hmm. is what we believe yeah. makes sense for the world. So yeah. um, do you think that or do you agree, because I think so, that young people hurt themselves by having that way of thinking? I don't know if I agree. I don't, I think that that's, a, I, I, I mean, I do agree to, I think, yes, I think definitely there's always a percentage that's that way. I think it's whether you know that those, I think what a lot of people struggle with is not, it's like if you ask somebody what they want, I remember this quote, they'll tell you all the things they don't want, but it's hard to know what you want. And I think a lot of people come out of school and they just don't know what to do so they're just looking to try to find their identity in something and so money tends yeah. to be the easier thing to sort of latch on to well and i think also that um the generation that's you know getting into the job world now has a lot of i, I assume there's a lot of fear around mm -hmm. future security where i think the money is like giving them a feeling of, of calm and security because there's a war, there's a pandemic, there's all these things that just lead to upheaval and like real, you know, poverty very fast. So I think it's it's hard to to judge it, I think. Mm. But I think if you can, like going for the, the education route, uh, not in terms of academic education, but in terms of like real life education mm. is is the way to go as long as you can still afford an apartment and you know yeah yeah like so what you, you what you should do is to find your source where to learn the mm. things that you do not learn in university so this is exactly what you did this is this is, was the criteria how you filtered which job am i going to accept is mm -hmm. that right yeah okay so uh, but there's also uh, the people uh, behind that i think you know on my first job I had two interviews and two job uh, opportunities, and generally they were both uh, interesting. But one of them, the person was like, I can't believe you'd go work at this place. And the other people were like, and the other guy was like, well, that you got two great opportunities. And I just liked him. And I was like, that's the attitude I want to be around. Mm. Somebody who is just, I mean, positive. they're both yeah, yeah. positive yeah. and really like, I mean, and then I went to work for them and my friends went to work for the other place and I made the right decision because they were a nightmare. And this person and this company was super nurturing mm. and I learned a lot and I grew a lot. And so this idea of growing, it's not just about what you achieve. It's about, you know, well, the the process and what comes out of it's not about this like end thing it's like what you go through with it how you grow who you grow with and that that's yeah. that's i think also the yeah. environment we want to create you i know? think also one maybe important thing to mention with both of our backgrounds is that we both come from families of um mm -hmm. business owners like okay. mm -hmm. none of our parents were able to go to university that was just not okay. in the cards there was not uh, a possibility and so you we have were a little then, bit of entrepreneurial blood both of you i think yeah i think it was kind of not even pressure, subconsciously yeah. yeah not at all pressure but it was subconsciously there and i think we were really lucky because we got to go to university mm. um and then kind of choose that path and go the, the more typical route but then switch over mm -hmm. and i think like especially because now we're in austria we were living in other places before having um you know, uh, my family around with the small things like when we open to be like, hey, you need a broom and a calculator and we need to get change for the mm. for the casa, you know, like yeah. all those small things. So I'm like, like, I think that gave us also um, much more of the confidence um, mm -hmm. to actually get started. And it was what we needed at the beginning, too. Was it maybe also a little bit of there is this um, I, I would in German I would say the selbstverständliche Freiheit. How, how would you translate that? Um, the kind of given freedom. Yeah, that um, you you know yeah. about that kind of freedom that somebody could have if he is his own boss, if he is his own entrepreneur, yeah. and you you do not have parallelly you do not have the the hunger, the hunger for um, satisfying yourself with things which are normally to you which others maybe do not have and they um, limit themselves a lot of young people 
have the hunger for lifestyle, have the hunger for things. And this is, um, this is not giving them the freedom to think of education and to think of mentorship mm -hmm. and to think more strategically mm -hmm. um, because they have the hunger for lifestyle. So mm -hmm. what you need to do, as he explained before, um, to have the guts to say, okay, I will take this job because there's a more positive person. Maybe it's not the money that much. What you have to do first is to accept, okay, it's not about money now. It's not mm -hmm. going to be the lifestyle in my 20s that others maybe. So uh, I think this is one of the of the the, the großen Bremsen, the, mm, the junge Leute. The big heute breaks. Haben. Yeah. yeah, I think it's quite interesting because to me, it seems like, I guess, from the people that we um, connect with, either employees or customers or, you know, family members, it seems like there are people that are very lifestyle driven and live that, you know, whatever Instagram lifestyle and they buy things for it to be shown and they need those status symbols. But I think that there is also a really big shift for the younger generation to actually be much less focused on money and more focused on what is it that I actually want to do personally. And they are maybe okay with um, living with roommates into their thirties and they don't need the big apartment. Like I think there's almost uh, uh, like two very separate worlds happening right now. And I think covid and the time that people have to really think about um what they need has maybe created this bigger shift in i think young people, people have to learn that 40 is the new 25 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then it's going to be easier for them mm -hmm. to accept it and to like but, go, yeah. the, go the slower route yeah and i think that that's delayed gratification right i think we live in a world where everything is instant gratification and so after especially i think maybe a generation that grows up on uh, social media and the internet has everything at their 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 fingertips, fingertips. Mm -hmm. so what that creates is um you know i can have that information now i can order that now i can do that now and i think it sets in one way, real, you know, it is reality, you can do it. it, also sets unrealistic expectations in how life actually works and how it unfolds. Mm. And so I think that's where the, the disconnect is happening right now. We're going through this transition. Who knows what the future is like and what opportunities that will uh, prevent, present to people and a, another generation, two or three in advance. But I think now I, I love about this talk that it's much more about self growth and it's much more going mm -hmm. in the direction of what, what we usually do not talk about here. Uh, there was once also a couple here from uh, Zena's eatery. They were all also all about um, uh, self growth and working mm -hmm. on yourself. And I think maybe we should do a second show where we talk about things like this. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, now I have to ask you again something regarding your business. Mm -hmm. uh, because That's okay, I want, also. Because, because I, I want to, I, I want to create some um, value bombs for the people watching. Mm -hmm. And um, can you, first of all, a, a short question: Do you think that it was necessary to have your path before opening your business, or could you have just opened it also with another path? No, I Only think for point. us, for yeah. what we're doing now, like no way we would have had to have gone through what we've gone through mm -hmm. in order to get here. I think it's, it's, I, yeah, I think. I think <laughs> it has to do with the fact also that Kaliana for us, it wasn't um, like this thing where we're like, oh, we looked at Vienna and the business landscape and there was a white space opportunity. Mm -hmm. And so we're like, let's do this. It was literally I think three years in the making, we had like uh, this idea was like growing. We started making a PDF. I was doing research. Christian was coming up with all these ideas and we're not super like risk loving people. We're quite mm. risk averse. So it took us a really long time to actually be like, OK, shall we do this? But at the end, the thing that pushed us over the edge to actually try is that this was really our passions coming together. Mm -hmm. Like I'm obsessed with plants i have been for so long it's like literally what kept me sane through. you would probably hate me for my plants then no because they're well, look, very they're dry happy. it's <laughs> all good spots. we'll talk about them afterwards <laughs> <laughs> okay, we will. no they're they're I'm great grateful they're great. for every tip you can give me <laughs> yeah. um but but there is that 
that deep love and Christian like since I know him, which is a long time now. I don't know a day where there wasn't at least like three personal growth books on his <laughs> nightstand. Okay. Like it just was always was always there. And so we we kind of just combined it into this thing. And then I think in a way with the pandemic, it was the craziest, hardest time to open, but it was also a good time because people spent more time at home. They thought more about their living spaces. They needed hobbies. They were looking to connect with something that wasn't mm. negative news all the time. Mm. And so this was also maybe a helpful thing in terms of awareness, but it was really kind of a weird, chaotic way of getting there. And then a lot of maybe also lack and chance. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think we needed every day we had before we opened. I like I like the there. part very much of uh, coming to your own business on a way of not having stress at all and of uh, of, of a secure way. I mean, I'm I'm more the other way around. I'm more the mm -hmm. okay, let's risk everything, let's go all in on something, <laughs> and let's hope it's going to work out, and not having mm -hmm. all the plans set up before we start. And um, but um, with 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 the age, by getting older, I see the benefits of having the more wise approach and the more quiet approach mm. of um, you said late gratification is also something you need to accept i think it's a part of learning self-discipline right mm. um where mm. where it's not about it it's about the process it's about it's about mm -hmm. the way and you bring this you know this quietness it's calmness you bring with you where you do not have to stress to hey this is you know i have to reach this to break even and i have you know i need this mm. and and that was definitely there too oh though my gosh, it yeah. just yeah that's just not seen yeah but outside, i don't think that it, we it were, was i don't think like, it was there for reaching life goals i think it was there just like to 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 break even the project so the project can pay itself yeah. i think that was it yeah, yeah it was yeah, not yeah. it was not like okay we have to make that much more to pay our dream apartment or to buy yeah, our no, not at all. or whatever yeah, it was it's just, just in a like business wow. so okay so Starting you have to go business. through that because economics to, yeah. is pushing you to do that mm -hmm. and it's but, worth noting with that is that we lived very i would say very fast intense lives in new york and london through the jobs we're in and mm -hmm. Miri, as she said, in London had found plants and that connection. I'd never seen her identify or connect with something. And she spent her weekends just, uh, you know, uh, we would go shopping and she was pruning and first she was into flowers and then she got really deep into plants. And we lived near this park and it started to create this balance for us. But what really happened was, you know, we were pre-COVID like a lot of people, like going towards the external and we just started to find, well, that's not actually satisfying. And so then we moved here and we gave up a lot, you know, like we, we, we left a lot behind in terms of what we had built, in terms of our careers, in terms of like, you know, the money that was associated with those careers. And, you know, here we live a lot simpler in this way and we very happily so and happily so yeah. happily like we don't we don't everything we make goes back into the business because we love Kaliana. i mm. mean Kaliana is it's uh, i'm i don't even like that idea that you walk into something that yeah. you love and you earn that's and that's so satisfying and that now we don't we do it to make sure that we can keep doing it mm. and everything else is if anything else comes that's really nice to have if possible but it's not our aim mm. i love the part that you're doing what you what you love and we have a lot of conversation the last years since we started the coffee lifestyle project and since we're analyzing a lot of different uh, businesses in in the hospitality space so you there, there was a time in the beginning especially where we were dividing the two groups the one group is uh, where the people are not at all passionate about what they sell or what they do but they just put up a business mm -hmm. yeah, and they have the, the the goal to do business and if possible to make something to figure out something what they can like um, uh, repeat in every street in vienna and to yeah. make some systems and whatever mm -hmm. and you have the people which they just do it for doing it yeah, they mm -hmm. just do it because they love it mm -hmm. they have and, and in the end in most cases the first ones are the ones closing very fast 
Mm. And uh, the other ones are the ones becoming great businesses and becoming great spots and becoming great people which are fulfilled and which mm. have a lot to say and a lot to talk about. I think that it works both ways, though. I think that those people, too, or that don't. They are successful people on both sides. Of yeah, course, yeah. Yeah. I just always feel like like for us, the especially the opening period, like, I mean, the first year really was so like brutal. excuse my language but like fucking hard and brutal mm, so that i'm like i don't hard. know i don't know how people do YouTube it youtube is going that, to ban us <laughs> uh, sorry. Yeah. um but i don't know how people do it that don't love, love what it. they do because literally yeah. that's the only thing that yes. carried us because we were like yeah and we were like hardly sleeping for yeah. a long time oh there's just... this great meme from steve jobs where he just said like about the same uh, sentence and i really really believe very hard that it's true you have to love what you do in order to to not give up yeah yeah yeah, yeah to push through i mean i think that yeah. that's if there's anything to take away from the i think in our create in our past we would consult all these businesses and you know one out of ten you would meet that person or that company that was like we love what we do mm. you know and this is everything for us and one out of 10 isn't enough to keep us engaged, which is why we left to go to our own thing so that we could be those people, mm. you know, so that we could live that life that put everything we have into this. I mean, we fucking love it mm. so damn much. Yeah. And we love our team and we love the environment. And we feel so lucky to be in the place that we're in and to mm. have the customers that come in. And we have amazing, I mean, 98% we always say like, you know, of course there's a 2% that are like challenging, challenging. Yeah, it's yeah. a nice way of putting it, but there's 98% who are just so lovely and mm. so great. Mm. And like, I, we're both so much more fulfilled. I can really imagine you having great conversations every day, like multiple times every day and having great situations you mm. really enjoy. I can really imagine that. What mm. I love the most is because I'm more in the shop downstairs actually than, than Christian, but I, what I love the most is that some people come in and they only come in for the plants, right? And they have like 250 plants at home and they're looking for this like specific one that is missing that we maybe have at the moment okay. or they're just browsing. Let's call them the hardcore plants. People. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And they exist and they probably don't even see that we have books. And then there's mm -hmm. other people that come in and they're like only looking at the books. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah. do you know we have yeah. plants? I have to, I have but, to admit that I, I, until today, I didn't know you have books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's also second and we're maybe restructuring that in the future but you it is secondary give visually them much more space mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and, but plans. so it's it's interesting because i'm like oh but everyone who walks out with something you know i mean there's like we have plant scissors we have pot certain things that it are maybe fits your story more so functional. good i'm 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 i, I cannot describe how much mm -hmm. i like this thing as you, in the beginning of the of, of the episode you said about the growth thing so you have mm -hmm. the self-growth aspect and you have to growing the plants and it, it fits very good mm -hmm. it fits very good and yeah. I, I want to come in the next days to visit your yeah. shop and yeah, to take yeah, a look yeah, for the books. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah, yeah for great. sure. I think mm -hmm. what I'd, I, one thing that I always said, and it's, it touches on the, the, some of this that we talked in the past or in the previously, and then this is that uh, designers, when I would interview designers, they would come and they'd show their portfolio and I would talk to them. I'd say the same thing every time, especially people out of school. I say like, go and work at the place that you want to work at and do the work that you want to do, even if they pay less, because then you'll create a portfolio of work that you like doing, and then you'll get hired to do that work. Yeah. If you go and work at the place for the money, but you don't like doing the work, then you're going to create a portfolio of that kind of work, and you're going to get more of that kind of work, mm. and your whole life will just be that work. Yeah. And I think that that applies to everything you know i think if you do the things regardless if you do them for the personal fulfillment and what it makes you feel good and makes you feel charged and like excited mm. about this life M money can be that thing yeah so i didn't want to say can, yeah. earlier that money cannot be that thing of course there are people where the money is the big passion mm -hmm. but then you should definitely go and work at the bank because mm -hmm. otherwise totally. you will have to combine this passion with something that is not your passion. Completely. And this is going to get very hard. There's a, I don't know if you know, there's a book by out recently by Ray Dalio called Principles. And yeah. he's a big hedge I have fund. It on, I have it at home. I didn't read it yet. And he's, <laughs> he's brilliant. I mean, he's brilliant. No, I and don't even have it at home. Sorry, but good you reminded me. He, <laughs> and just watch the YouTube clip. And he, that's even almost enough of like yeah. the animated things that he does. It, 
he's brilliant and the guy loves the game that he's in mm -hmm. and more power to him you know that's where his mind works and that's yeah. what he gets excited by so yeah like but i don't think he loves if you talk to him he's it's not about the money it's about the challenge i have i i have listened to but it's, it's like two years ago there was an interview with him and patrick Bet david they have a great conversation i don't really mm -hmm. remember details of the conversation but i know since then i wanted to read his book mm -hmm. his, his book is, is is a few years old already mm -hmm. I, I think yeah and let's also mention that the guy is a billionaire so it's not <laughs> just like any anyone who is yeah just of course writing. So of course I, I am sure that whatever he he wrote in his book he wrote out of it experience worked and it yeah. worked for him yeah, yeah. So thank you definitely for that input. I will <laughs> definitely order the book now. Yeah. And um, yeah, great, great input. Um, guys, some more words about your business. I mean, you, you came to Vienna, you have uh, one of the great streets, the Neubachasse, one of the most popular shops. Uh, you have um, caught the main, main part of, uh, of our community. Everybody <laughs> loves you. Whenever we post you, Aww. people go crazy. Oh, that's so okay, so, so you definitely have yeah. to tell us some some more things about mm -hmm. um, or, or let's let's pack it in a in of a way course, how, yeah. how we can pack it for the for mm -hmm. the listeners to be kind of advice. Like what do you have what, what's the main thing you should keep on to have this kind of fulfilled success that you have? I mean I think it, in the end, there's a lot of aspects to it, obviously. And I think we're actually still, like Christian was saying, pretty new in, in that world. We've been open for a year and a half, a bit, yeah, about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, Corona years. <laughs> and yeah, so it feels like, how do you say, in like dog years? It's, yeah. <laughs> it feels like a lot, a lot more. But at the same time, um, we were, we had four um, lockdowns since opening. So there was a lot of start stop go start stop so go. you're pro in in opening things they yeah. open like four times right yeah <laughs> um and mm. but so i think uh, we we don't really have that we don't have a regular year yet we don't know what that looks like because we were so busy you know thinking about how can we do click and collect and create a web shop and like do all these things just to to kind of um tackle the COVID challenges mm. that we're still new to a lot of things, I think, overall. But I do think at the end, the most important thing is when the customer comes in, that there is like a positive environment, that there is good energy, that there's people behind it that love, you know, the, mm. the product that can talk about it in a passionate way. Um, and that you bring something to the table that's not already out there in, mm. in a way. Yeah. And I think that you just I don't know that you're just super into it. I mean, at the end of the day, it just I think it just comes down to like, you know, I think we had the advantage in a way where we worked in this industry and we got to see all these different aspects of different businesses and how they worked and how they didn't work. And we just realized like, okay, well, we want to build something that is a combined of all of our passions. And that's a lot easier said than done. That's a really difficult thing to do, I think, you know, to like, structure a business about how, how people want something mm. that you love doing mm -hmm. you know and i think bridge but it's like what's the alternative i mean i think it's a it's you have to brave that challenge and at the end of the day you're probably gonna explore something it might not work out but it'll lead you somewhere else and that might not work out and then it'll lead you somewhere else i mean we didn't open this up overnight like we literally thought about this for two to three years and I was interning in a plant shop in London yeah. next to work to you know just like cleaning the floors watering things just mm. to see Reading get an books, idea watching of what it podcasts is. Yeah. like listening to YouTube all the things like you know and I like the mm. personal development space like you know to be quite open it's like I just was a kid that just struggled mm. struggled with my own like whether it was depression or anxiety or any of these things, like mm. I needed these books because, uh, you know, my parents, my mom was a single mom that raised two boys on her own. She worked, she ran a company. I didn't have a lot of people around me to explain life. So I found it in books. Mm. And, and the worst thing you can feel is alone and to feel like you don't understand yourself or the world you inhabit. And so for us, it's like to combine those concepts of growth with nature, it's like that was a beautiful thing to try to fuse together. 
you know, when we started, Miri was like, I, you know, I remember saying like, oh, I just, I don't want to own a plant shop. It can't just be a plant shop. It has to be, we come from worlds where it's all about deep concepts. It's all about thinking deeper about something and then communicating and creating something bigger around that. And so then if we can fuse this passion with like my passion in terms of like really just being like these open conversations, if everybody again, like can talk about these bigger things, then everybody feels a little more understood. And then we can have progress and we can have connection and all because connection only comes through conversation and being open. And yeah. that, that to me, that fusing those things together, that was not, that wasn't easy. It took a lot of effort to try to figure out how to make a business out of that. Mm. And then I think once the business opened also, I think, I mean, everyone has it, but it's just true. It's like quality is really, really key. If you mm. don't have a quality oh, product of course, of course. and it's, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter if it's a coffee or a haircut or plants, <laughs> like that's the main thing. And I think that's where we also put a lot, like that's what you don't see, I guess, when you yeah, come into the yeah. shop, it all seems easy and like yeah. everyone's having a good time and there's music playing, but there's you know, like guys, a lot of hard work going I, into I'm, I'm really, really overwhelmed with this conversation <laughs> because it's, it's, it's so much more that we could talk about, yeah. not just like, how do you open a cafe? Yeah. But, um, I would like to add one one mm -hmm. sentence to your last sentence is I think quality starts with uh, the human. So if the human on the top is working on the quality about his personal qualities or whatever he mm -hmm. does will feel it. Mm -hmm. He will he will give his quality to whatever he is doing. Yeah. I think 100%. that's very that's very obvious in your business. Mm -hmm. It was very obvious in this conversation. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we will not be able to make a four hour episode. Yeah. Here, <laughs> but definitely we would have the material to do it. And I yeah. think that if, if, if I would have been more prepared, <laughs> then uh, we, we could um, we could definitely go more in depth into very, very interesting stuff here. Mm. Um, Can I make a point about what you just said? Yeah, I think sure. it's important that I, I, I really f like, really believe in this, and I think that this is in terms of what we were talking about before, in terms of a generation, um, and what they're experiencing. So, I often say that f quality is a byproduct of focus. If you don't have focus, you can't have quality. You just can't look at anything that you look anything that you think is just the highest quality, it took focus. What do we live in? We live in a world of distraction. We live in a world that is just tearing us apart in terms of like where our attention is. So how do you create focus and quality in a world of that's, tear, that's trying to just steal your attention all the time? That's a very, very powerful sentence, what you just said. And thank mm -hmm. you for this one. I have never... Uh thought of the sentence in this constellation but uh yes uh, quality growth of quality is a result of focus mm -hmm. uh, i just read um a few days ago somewhere it was uh focus is one of the if not the most powerful energy that mm -hmm. you have in yourself so and whatever you put your focus on you're adding the energy to whatever mm -hmm. it is and this is how you increase the quality right so I think it would be very uh, sensible if uh, the young generation would get the awareness of the fact what focus is and how how you can deploy well, it. And how and to I cultivate think, it. Yeah, and I know? think now yeah. literally all external for like I even see it with myself. It's like mm -hmm. you have a minute where you're not busy and you go on Instagram and it's just like this automatic thing. Yeah. And it's I, I it almost takes you, feel it takes like, away free time from you because yeah. you cannot you cannot spend time with yourself. Exactly. And that's also, it takes away time from your ability to kind of build that muscle to yeah. have focus. Yeah. And it's almost like it's very hard to work against it. You have to work very consciously against it because those things are literally built yeah. to I, take I, your attention. I just had the conversation attention. this morning when I, I uh, sometimes my son asks me to take him to school. So I walk with him mm -hmm. 20 minutes. We have a 20 minute walk. And we were just talking about this morning. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I, I just told him there, there are so many situations like uh, situations which are which have a 30 seconds to a three minute situation where you are waiting for the bus or where you're mm -hmm. riding the bus mm -hmm. or where you are uh, waiting for for the for the traffic light to switch exactly. or where you're sitting on the toilet or mm -hmm. I don't know, 100 situations 
where you uh, combined have your 30 minutes throughout the day where you're with yourself and this is taken away from you by the phone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I will not say by social media because social media somehow is my business and I have, I have a passion for social media. And it also has a lot media. of benefits. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it does, but it's like a tool, you know, it yeah. depends on how you use it. Do you exactly. use it or does it use you? Does it use you? Yeah. Yeah. Correct, yeah. yeah. But definitely it, uh, it the, the time... Uh, quantity shrinks where you have uh, time with yourself and mm-hmm. you should not nobody should lose it well and i think that mm-hmm. that's like the another the other analogy i really like is like if you think about a light bulb and a light bulb emit, emit like we're all light bulbs and we're just emitting all this light in all these different directions but then think of like if you're like this think about being a, light, a laser pointer yeah and you're just like and you close it and you're like bam and you're focused yeah. but now like what is what are what are what is younger generation suffering more and more with depression anxiety adhd all of these things why mm. well because they're from an early age they're just being distracted they don't know how to keep attention they don't know how to keep focus yeah. And then what? What's and the, how would it be possible? Yeah, like, it's not their don't have fault, a chance. of course. Yeah. And yeah. so, what? Yeah. What's the byproduct? Overwhelm. Yeah. There's too much. Yeah. How do I process this? What do I do? So, what we're trying to do is create a space where it is about focus. You come in. It makes you feel a certain way. Instead of people coming in like this, they come in like this, and they're open. Mm-hmm. And then there's open for conversations like this. Open to engage with nature. Open for a book open for you know whatever we have planned next which we're very excited about but um th- th- i think that is what kaliana is yeah i couldn't you know i don't think we could say oh it's this thing like a coffee shop or a plant store or this thing it's it's just a, it's a it's much more yeah and it's abstract and we we love that we don't want to mm. really be put in a box or define it but we understand for you know, bureaucracy stakes when we go to the government, yeah. we have to tick the box. Of what I think we there are. is a lot you have to give. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's really a lot you have to give. And I think there is a lot of areas where you could develop into. Now, let it be, a, I don't know, a kind of uh, whatever, whatever uh, ways you have to find focus, if it is meditation or yoga mm-hmm. or whatever else it is, or boredom maybe. <laughs> uh, but, um, there is a lot there's really a lot you can mm-hmm. give mm-hmm. and you should really put out a lot of valuable <laughs> content about it we're, we're working on yeah. it yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but it's it's very it's yeah. it's lovely to hear and i think it's very uh validating um you know coming from you i think somebody who's actively doing this and and engaging yeah. in the way you're engaging i think that's always i think well i i i wanted to uh, to be uh specialized on conversations for people who want to start a business Mm -hmm. but uh, if you want to start a business that means you have to deal a lot with yourself you have Mm -hmm. to know a a lot about a lot of things yes Mm -hmm. so um, the the growth the growth idea and the whole idea of what you're doing is um, no matter if you want to start a business or not it's uh, something that will help you in achieving your goals, like mm-hmm. spending, uh, ha- having a um, having a mentality of development, mm-hmm. and having a, um, a sense for that is mm-hmm. is always good. And when, if, especially if you want to become uh, one in a hundred, one in a thousand, one in a million, so let's say every entrepreneur or something like that, mm-hmm. you should definitely deal with with yourself, and you should definitely deal with all of what we were talking about mm-hmm. today. So I'm very happy we had that here in the show. Mm-hmm. I'm also sure that it's not going to be the video with the most views because it's a very hard topic, you know. Mm-hmm. And you have to have, you know, you have to have a certain um, a gewisse Reife. Uh, maturity. Yeah, mm-hmm. to, to find time for that. Mm-hmm. And to, you know, not be ashamed of going there. What will the other people say? They will laugh about me and stuff mm-hmm. like this. So... Um, it's like building a muscle. Yeah, it's like yeah. anything. You have to start small. You're not going to lift 200 kilos. You know, you're going to like have to start very, very small. You work that muscle, and slowly but surely, every experience, every day, every opportunity, it's just it's a mindset of whether you look. You know, one thing that I had to do, and it's one of my favorite things, is when there's a problem or there's a challenge. I'm like, is this being done to me or is this being done for me? And if I look at it both ways, one, it's a lot harder to deal with. Another, it 
it, it challenges me to look for the meaning of what I have to go through in order to get over this thing or mm -hmm. through this thing. And I think the thing like what I learned is after being employed for a number of years to then switching to being selfständig or a business owner is that if you want to or not, it will bring out mm -hmm. your deepest fears, your mm -hmm. like all your weak points, all your strengths, like all this stuff, if you want to or not. So yeah. you might as well be like open to deal with it because yes. it will hit you anyways. Yeah. You know, I think I like think it just an openness happens. in the beginning and an awareness of everything is going to help a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you will, you will, it will happen to you also if you, you are not exactly. open to it, Yeah. but you, you will have a much harder time dealing with it. Yeah. But and like, it will be much less fun of a ride. And I in think, and probably, I think, probably. Yeah. I, I sent recently to a friend who I know is having a hard time right now because he just made a transition from a job and a work move somewhere. I sent him uh, this Oprah Winfrey clip. It's like this great, that says the greatest speech of all time. And it's like all this inspiration. Uh -huh. And literally there's like that and like three, like an Alan Watts video and like three other things that when we were going through this experience, literally maybe every morning I listen to these in order to get into the mindset because the difficulty of going through starting a business in COVID, all of those challenges, it'll bring you down, you know, it will make you bummed out and mm. it's so hard. And so you have to actively find the inspiration and the motivation that that is required and everybody needs to find their own sources that light them up. And you have to cultivate those and then consistently revisit it because you just need that charge in order to push through and yeah. push through. And that I think anybody can do. There's so much information. There's so much inspiration mm. out there. You just yeah. need to find it and cultivate it. And then. Yeah, but I think there is maybe for somebody even too much information so it loses its its weight yeah so they oh uh, totally it, yeah. yeah totally so maybe um, a personal conversation even if with the uh, with the same content mm -hmm. um has maybe a deeper effect yeah than, oh definitely than, than just you know you you do not really know whether or not to believe content found in the internet yeah, or, exactly. or, or let's say books. I mean, yeah. books, I think in general, it requires somebody, not that every book is great by any measure, but there yeah. are some classics but, but out definitely there. Definitely every book is a, is, is a conversation you have with yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, definitely every book you read is, is it's, I think it's much more about what, what, is the, what is the book getting out of you than what are you getting out of yeah. the book, right? So yeah, well, what, exactly. how you're interpreting it because you're listening to this story or reading this lesson or mm. this inspiration and you're thinking about it through your own context, which mm. makes you have to think about your own life through what is being said. Yeah. So as opposed to a conversation where you're constantly going to get, if we're having a conversation, I'm going to cut in with my experience. And so it, it almost, it, I, you can use that context to better understand your experience, but through a book, you're just, you're very much focused going through this thing. And, mm. and I think it's same with journaling, same with meditation. There's mm. a lot of different things that really help to better understand yourself and then therefore get through yeah. these challenges um, a little bit more mm. powerfully. I have one more thing I want to discuss with you, <laughs> even if we're probably over time. But uh, there, is, there is one thing that, uh, that just you know, came into my mind while, um, while um, getting and an eindruck von euch zu bekommen and to get, get an impression yeah as i, as um, I get the impression yeah. about you i ask myself uh for sure you have team members you're not working by yourself you have oh. people working in your shop mm -hmm. and working in your business and i know it's a very very common problem nowadays finding staff and finding team members mm -hmm. and we talked about it before we uh, switched on the cameras and right now i see something that is potentially a magnet for somebody to work with you and this is this kind of having this kind of conversation mm -hmm. or having the kind of environment where you grow with, mm -hmm. with 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 all the aspects so do you think this is something that is helping you in developing your team in developing your business in attracting uh talent i think so i mean i would hope that our kind of bigger 
mission and goal is inspiring to you know potential future team members and that's a big reason why they would join i think we also always say when we have an interview with someone who is a potential candidate for a new job like that it all seems like quite dreamy and nice downstairs and it's all beautiful and you water a little bit and there's great coffee but it is really really hard work too mm. and i think like we always try really yeah. to warn people because we're all you know we carry a lot of We always call it we, terracotta we, crossfit because yeah. sometimes there's a delivery of pots and it's like 500 kilos of pots and they need to be moved and they're oh. heavy and they are not easy to carry yeah. or like big plants, you know, all this stuff, like the watering, the, the dirty soil, like forget a manicure. It's just out the window yeah. right away. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of this <laughs> stuff. Um, so we do, we do emphasize that, but I think we just had like a year review with one of our employees mm. and we sat down with her and it was just an amazing exchange. It was just an mm. awesome conversation. And that was really important for us to like really, um, I don't know, nurture that mm -hmm. in our team. But yeah, I mean, I think our learning was, I think after that first year that we really need, we need a team and we need people mm. because of all the lockdowns we couldn't really hire. So we had um, one, one or two people kind of support us in that first year. And one, I mean, amazing soul that was Ugh. came in to, just be there through all the crazy at the beginning yeah. um but she's like near and dear to our hearts like forever yeah but it like we realized like we can't do this forever just you know the two of us and like mm. one other person and now the team is bigger and it gives us a sanity and the ability to think ahead and not just you know um, put out fires all the time mm. but it was just kind of the the time because of how kutzabite worked and all the stuff that we kind of just couldn't really higher and do that so once um we could it was like a, okay like we can breathe again and that like is powerful because it just makes you really appreciative of all the people in in the team and what they do mm. um so yeah i mean yeah now right now we're in a in a great place i don't know how it will be in the future if hiring will really become harder let me let me ask you for for maybe an advice i think you're the right person to give this Uh, both of you are the right person to give this kind of advice. Um, something I usually do not do, do in the show, but maybe you have an advice for business owners um, who are uh, cafe owners, restaurant owners, who have a problem attracting mm -hmm. talent in the moment. What is it that you would advise them to do if they struggle finding new talent? I mean, not offering more money is probably yeah. not the solution. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would. Hmm. It's a tough question because I don't I don't know if we either one of us feels like comfortable to be mm -hmm. like, we know the answer to this. Because we don't. I well, think. I have put you in the situation. I yeah. have put you in the position that you do much <laughs> more than others do. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I think ultimately and it's it's who we are and it's what we're about. So it's easy to say this, but it's like, you know, you just have to create an environment that, uh, it, yeah, nurtures people and like, and makes them feel like they're part of something, you know, and like makes them feel like they're but contributing to something. That's, a, that's, a, that's a, unfortunately a cliche answer, which is very, very true. It's, yeah. And yeah. Which is, which people do not hear because you hear it so often that yeah. it loses weight. It but is it's, a cliche, it, it, it's but pretty it's, much what you have to and do. And I always say like cliches sometimes are cliches because they're true. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's yeah, just. But I also think that that's actually a really hard thing to execute. And mm -hmm. it's like, you know, we don't always succeed at that. Like mm -mm. we certainly don't because sometimes it's just, it's busy and it's crazy and it's all hands on deck and everyone needs yeah. to do something and you gotta, like, I think that's something we're still learning too. But at the end, that's like definitely a big goal to to strive toward mm. in the end. And I think it can be a big mission, but it can also be make the best, yeah. amazing cup of coffee in the city or like think about, the road you know whatever that is like okay. it can be a small thing like i think like we i don't know if you um how old how long ago we saw jiro dreams of sushi that movie mm -hmm. um it's an old movie about a, a japanese sushi master who has a small restaurant in a train station in tokyo and he just spent his life making the best 
maki and nigiri and all that and is obsessed with it and it's all about this deep obsession of something really simple in the train station mm. and he spent his life doing this so i think it's like the the be- it doesn't always have to be this massive yeah. mission you know yeah. it can be a small thing but yeah. then if you're really good at it you give so much joy to other people yeah. and mm. so i think um motivating people to or giving them the platform to to learn and and um to develop develop exactly yeah into Mm -hmm. into that like that and maybe they don't you know they won't do that for 10 years maybe it's a year Mm. but being okay with it that you invested a year in somebody who developed but who will uh probably leave you at some point yeah Yeah. and And that's okay too i remember when we were living in new york and we'd go from apartment to apartment apartment you know you just in new york you're just constantly moving around and you we'd never buy furniture that was like long term because we're like well we're going to move somewhere else and yeah. like you just never invest in it yeah. and so therefore i remember the minute we actually got a place together and we started to buy something that was a bit more and we were like okay we're gonna have this for a while suddenly it was this whole new experience and suddenly we started building our own voice and our own point of view through this experience and i know it's an abstract sort of metaphor but i do think like when the employees come in, even though they might not be there a year or two from now, if you have that attitude that you're not going to invest in them, they're not going to invest in you. Mm-hmm. And so you're not going to have an experience yeah. and you're not going to provide an experience so the customers aren't going to feel that either. So it's this thing where it's like, well, why would I invest in them if they're not going to be here a year from now? But it's like, but then what's your philosophy on life? Like, mm-hmm. I think for us, it's like, if you, we really believe in that present moment and we were saying to one of our team members recently, it's like your next experience, wherever it is, is going to be a byproduct of what you do now. Mm. So you're not going to like none of us are going to go find this dream thing. You need to be your best right now today and tomorrow will be a byproduct of that. Next week will be a byproduct of that. Next year will be a byproduct of continuously mm. doing that. So if you come in with that attitude and we can our job is essentially as 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 shepherding this thing is to we have to walk the walk too so we need to come in with that attitude so that they feel it so we're not just saying hey be like this but we're you know do what we say don't do it don't what is it say what we do what we do or don't uh, i don't know cut, cut that part <laughs> out. Don't, don't, it's like do what we do it should be do what we do and not only do what we say hey, precisely and usually people say like don't uh, do what i do just do what i say exactly yeah. and that that i think is an old world mentality yeah and i think that's what is when you see these big you know, giants. It's like the, my father telling me not to smoke with having the cigarette in the hand. One hundred percent. And I think it's like you see these big corporate brands or these people at the top that are not connected at all to the to the people that are working for them. Mm. And I think like that's just a mistake not to understand who the yeah. people are or what the or how the yeah. organization works. Maybe we could summarize it saying like you have to add to people value. You have to add, you have to give them value, not in form of money, not only in form of mm-hmm. money. Of course, also everybody needs this fuel yeah, of we course, have yeah. in our world, but you have to uh, have different ways of adding value to somebody. Completely. Uh, mm-hmm. I also, you know, I also heard a lot of times the point of view from a business owner that he doesn't want to invest in his uh, in, in his staff because uh, in ha- in six months from now they are going to take all the knowledge and open a business and make a competition for him mm-hmm. so you know i mean if, if if you do not want to give knowledge to somebody then you're really you missed a lot of things i mean all the knowledge of the world probably is in the internet right mm-hmm. so if somebody's really interested he's going to get educated somehow mm-hmm. but uh the execution is what is differentiating you from him. So you don't have to be afraid in this kind of manner. You should still look for a way how to bring value to everyone who is uh, related to you somehow. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think like when I uh, was at university, I was quite unsure of which direction I wanted to go in. It was quite broad. And what I did is just, I, I did like four internships in that time. Like I spent a lot of time 
interning at different places and it was more like an exclusion process than anything else but mm. i was like oh yeah this industry no it's not my thing or this type of job actually i really didn't like that until you get to the thing that you like and i think you have to expose yourself to those different worlds yeah. and that way you can then learn what it is you mm. you actually want and i think um, but still being aware that this might change 10 years from now five exactly. years from now yeah. and being okay yeah. with it. it will change yeah it will i mean change. i think that's the yeah. thing is we know it's going to change yeah so if you don't learn to be flexible yeah. if you want things to be a certain way and you're going to keep it that way yeah. I, good luck. I mean, I don't know <laughs> yeah. how today a, a person starting a business can do that that way because yeah. that's not how we now. Now we know that things are constantly changing, and if you don't adopt that mindset, I think flexibility and um, creativity in how you think through something is going to be, if not already, probably the most valuable skill set mm -hmm. to have. Mm -hmm flexibility in a constantly changing environment and constantly experimenting, which is what you're talking about here, which is trying new things. So cu curiosity. Curiosity. Yeah. If something's not and working. And an open mind, I and, think. Yeah, is open really, mind yeah. is, yeah. So I think all of those things, again, easier said than done, but it doesn't make it less true. Yeah. It's one of those things where then that means one needs to, again, work on themselves go inward, adopt these kinds of mindsets, because if it wasn't taught to you, then you, know, you don't have to believe us. There are a million other people out there mm. who are far more successful yeah. than us that are saying the same exact thing. So yeah, <laughs> define successful. <laughs> so well, yeah, successful in that they're created something that they're passionate about. That people and find valuable. That people find yeah. valuable. Not money, not fame, not yeah. but really like determined. That's the ultimate mm -hmm. state of success, I would also yeah, say. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Great. Guys, um, unfortunately, we have to come to an end. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I'm very, very uh, happy that you've been here. Thank you a lot for your time and for yeah. this really awesome conversation. Yeah, thank you. I really hope I will make you come again yeah. and uh, have another conversation. I will be yeah. better prepared. I really <laughs> didn't think that we will have such a conversation about self-development. Thank you. Now we're going to turn off everything. And I have one or two more questions for you which should not be on the camera okay. <laughs> oh, Jesus. interesting oh, yeah well, I'm intrigued. thank you so much for having yeah. us it was a pleasure and thank, thank you, you for Jonathan. doing it all in english to yeah. make it oh it was it, that was a tough one <laughs> yeah yeah thank well, you so thank much you.